Tiffany here with Years of Years, and it's this day in Disney for July 24th. And we are heading not too far back to 1985 with the release of Walt Disney's uh, 25th animated feature film, The Black Cauldron. So this premiered in the US on this day. And this film is loosely based on the first two volumes of Lord Alexander's Chronicles of Perdain. So this is set in the mythical land of Perdain, and the evil Horn King hopes to secure an ancient magical cauldron, of course, so he can take over the world with his evil plans. <laughs> so of course he needs some strong opposition to his plans, so in comes Swineheart Taran and the princess Elomui and the bard Fluterflam and of course a wild creature named Gurgi. Um, this was at the time the most expensive film that the Walt Disney Company had produced and it took a long time to produce. I believe it was 12 years <laughs> and um, there was a lot of setbacks and a lot of problems in production um, and then once it went to box office it didn't do well and didn't even make back all that they had spent. So they didn't actually even put this out to video till 1998. So <laughs> quite a while from 85 to 98 there. So uh, I guess a big disappointment at the time, but not a disappointment to us. We love The Black Cauldron and we really enjoy the film. And um, I know little six-year-old Brad <laughs> really enjoyed this film. He enjoyed the commercials. It, he even was talking to me today about it and how it opened up his mind and um, heart to the fantasy world. This was the one that did it for him and he's a big lover of, you know, um, the Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons and all, all the different fantasy things and so am I. But this was the, the thing that got him. And um, he actually went and would try and check out the Lord Alexander um, Chronicles of Perdain from the library and try and read those and read through many of those as well. So he had a lot of fun with that. Um, and we just enjoyed the film as a family as also. Um, as well, if you... I think a few, yeah, I know, a few videos back I had mentioned um, a podcast, Disney Story Origins. Paul J. Hale does such a good job of taking uh, the original stories and then the Disney films and going through and showing you the differences and the similarities. And he did a great job with The Black Cauldron. So go check out that podcast and uh, put it on. It's, it's great for anyone, including the family and all of his podcasts are good. And if it's not um, gonna be great for little kids, he will mention it in the beginning. So he does a great job of making it family friendly. I love those podcasts and what he's doing with Disney Story Origin, Origin. so check it out if you haven't already. Um, so next up on this day in Disney, in 1989, um, the Town Square Cafe changes over to Tony's Town Square Cafe. And you're probably like, me? What? It wasn't always Tony's? <laughs> no, I kind of had a feeling it wasn't always Tony's. It was the Town Square cafe and it was a victorian era restaurant that served breakfast lunch and dinner it was supposed to be um sponsored by a coffee company at first and then that fell through so oscar meyer actually was the sponsor for this restaurant and little oscar was there hang handing out uh wiener whistles to children when it opened uh so that was a lot of fun but it really didn't serve hot dogs so didn't quite match up with the theming there, but that's okay. Uh, you could enjoy some really good foods like uh, Monte Cristo sandwich, crepes, jambalaya, uh, fresh catfish, um, like a deli plate, just, you know, stuff like that back then. It was a lot of fun to eat and <laughs> more upscale than 
hot dogs, of course. And then uh, in 1981, Oscar Mayer did not want to um, renew, so Hormel took it over. And it pretty much had the same, mostly the same, it became a little more Western. And uh, for the men menu, there was the whole front page of the menu gave you the history of Hormel. So a lot of fun to sit down from your fun Disney vacation and, and read a nice history on, on Hormel. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure it was a lot of fun. It, it, you can go look at it online and it's real neat and fun to see. And it just, it had more of a, a Western. So the architecture I think didn't quite go as well. I'm not really sure. I, I couldn't get a lot of pictures of how the theming went for that particular cha changeover to Horm Hormel. But in 89, uh, Disney got it to themselves because Hormel didn't want to, you know, sponsor anymore. So then they were able to do Tony's um, Town Square Cafe, which it is today and we love. And that goes perfectly with the Victorian theming because that's when the movie was set. And Brad and I have enjoyed, and our whole family have enjoyed going there for um, special meals and Italian fare, and it's a lot of fun. So <laughs> that's it. And I, you know, I couldn't find a menu, but I just basically know those are some of the things I really wanted to share, like a whole menu with you guys, because I love talking about classic menus or food in general. Who doesn't? But I couldn't find it. So if you find any more or if you got to eat there please share in the comments um, some of your favorite foods over there or the favorite foods you like today at Tony's so that's it for this day in Disney and we'll see you next time